you mentioned whacking and playing in Spain and things like that. I mean, Europe has always been yeah. absolutely in love with Saxon, haven't they? Even even when yeah. I don't know America, the music scene changed in the nineties, didn't it? And and Saxon yeah. kind of fell a bit. But in, in Europe, you've always had a huge following and always had really high charting records and things like that. Yeah, I mean the the one you know the one country that really supported us and they've all they're very i mean they seem to be very loyal to all their bands is germany yeah yeah you know they are they're very loyal fans over there so that was that was the one place we knew you know when saxon had a downturn when the grunge thing happened and everything that was one place we could go i mean you you know they'd be there so whereas you know some of the shows in england we had to we had to sort of drop down sort of um capacity wise but we kept doing it we did i remember one tour we did i think we played 60 shows in the uk oh wow <clears throat> we went we went to places that hadn't had bands for years you know and we were playing some of these lovely small theaters i mean they were great they had never been played before you know and it was, no it was brilliant i mean it was hard work but it was great so that kind of kept us going as well you know and one just little oddity to ask you about as well. I think it was the, the end of the century, start of the century, when um, Graham Oliver and, and Steve Dawson decided to trademark the name Saxon and it got a bit messy and went to court. And, and thankfully, Biff and, and the, the boys, the rest of you, retained the name yeah. to Saxon. I mean, what, what was your thoughts surrounding all that? I mean, it, it got very annoying. I mean, you know, I mean, originally they, they, they started calling themselves son of a bitch, I think it was. But um, I think the thing was they weren't, getting a lot of interest gig wise for that there was a lot of stuff flying about at that time um but then we we heard reports there was this bogus saxon going around and we thought we knew straight away who it was it was obvious so, i mean we had you know apparently you know people were people were turning up at gigs in like place like belgium and stuff. i think it was belgium i think thinking it was us and it wasn't you know and that's that's cheating the fans for a start and um so yeah i mean we had to do this high court thing which is you know unfortunate but it but it just had to be done and the ruling the end ruling was that they could, could call themselves oliver dawson saxon we agreed with that as long as the oliver dawson and the saxon were equal size and they couldn't use our font you know the, our, the, the saxon logo they couldn't use that and um Oh, sorry, I live uh, quite near a private airfield. You just got the Luftwaffe going over at the moment. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we had to stop. We just had to stop it. But uh, I mean, there were so many things going off. It was suddenly in, uh, in the press. There was a thing, Saxon playing at where the hell was it? It was somewhere in Lincolnshire, or or maybe somewhere around Peterborough or something. It was some biker festival and it said Saxon in the early days featuring so and so, so and so, Nigel Glockler. And I was like, what? What the hell is this? <laughs> I think it's back then. Yeah. You know, so I rang the promoter up and I said, no, it's not me, mate. So I think he cancelled the whole thing. You know, I'm, I'm, who, whoever instigated that, I don't know. But, you know, but, you know, they went out again. I think, actually, I think Graham's going out as Graham Oliver's army now, I think. So, because I think Steve Dawson's retired, I think. So, but hey ho. Hey, oh, indeed. And uh, just moving on, I mean, proudly Saxon have maintained the, and carried on the brilliant work year after year. And, and we had the release of the 24th studio album, Hellfire and Damnation. It's another tremendous yeah. record. I want to start at the very start of that record, though. Brian Blessed, <coughs> I mean, unmistakable voice that he's got. And he, he opened oh, yeah. the album. So so how did he yeah. get involved? How did you get him to, to come in and, and do that opener for you? Well, well he's, he did an intro for us. I think it, I think it was at Bloodstock or somewhere. He, did, he came on and did an intro for us at a festival, just introduced us. Yeah. And that was great, you know. So, no, we sort of kind of kept in touch with him and everything. And, you know, I mean, he was, he was up for it. So just go for it. Is Brilliant. he a fan of the band? <clears throat> oh, yeah, I think he is, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Brian loves his rock. We like that. <laughs> and again, it's been another <laughs> successful release. It came out, um, was it last month? I think it was. And top 20 yeah. in the UK. It was top five across Europe. Again, we're talking Austria, yeah. Germany, Switzerland, Sweden, all these sorts of countries. It, it yeah. must be amazing for you yeah. all these years on, all these albums on to see that, that the records are still loved so much and, and the demand is still there for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's great. It's quite sort of... Uh... It's quite humbling to see it, actually, but it's sort of, you know, we're, we're sort of really pleased and um, 
you know, I say now, you know, thank you to all the fans for buying it and everything. And, you know, we're going on tour soon. So <clears throat> you'll be hearing some of the new tracks live. And, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we, we sort of, the, doing the last album, well, every album, you know, every album's got its certain sort of memories. Yeah. But doing this one, the vibe was great. It was, you know, with Brian yeah. joining yeah. and everything. So the vi whole vibe was great. And, um, you know, it's everything's just slotted into place. And, and I think the main thing is, well, it was fun to make. You know, it's hard, again, it's hard work, but it was fun to make. And I think the minute you stop finding the whole thing fun, then stop. But we do find it fun. It's still fun and we'll keep going. As long as people want us, we'll keep going. Oh, excellent. That's great news. I remember speaking to um, uh, Pete Agnew from Nazareth, and he says that oh, yeah. rock stars, they don't retire, they just kind of drop dead. Uh, <laughs> and we hope that doesn't happen yeah, anytime don't, soon. But there's... Don't say that, for God's sake. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, but there's no plans for, I don't know, these farewell tours or albums or anything like that from no. you guys then? Not at all. Not at all. You know, we're already looking towards the next album. Oh, fantastic you know so uh, yeah we're going to have a busy year this year you know we've yep. got the we've got the gigs with Judas Priest starting in in March yep and um we've got that then we come back here i think we're touring here for about 6 weeks yeah, I was going to say, because obviously in the UK, you've got a, a triple header yourselves, Judas Priest and Uriah Heep. I mean, three amazing yeah. bands. And you've got 20-odd yeah. shows across 10 different countries across Europe. And, and you start, yeah. as you said, here in the UK. So that's going to be <clears throat> brilliant. I mean, when was the last time you toured with Judas Priest? Can you remember? Actually, it wasn't that long ago. It was, oh, God, we did, we did a tour of um, the US with them. Okay. It was us, the US, and, um, oh, God, what are they called? Um you know, Scott Gorham's band. Oh, Thin Lizzy? No, not Thin Lizzy. The other, um, oh, God, what are they bloody called? Brains fried at the moment. <laughs> um, uh, not Black Star Riders, is it? That's it, Black Star. Well done. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so they were opening. We were in the middle and Priest were on. That was a, that was a brilliant tour. It, you know, that was great. That was about, what, five years ago, something like that, I think. Oh, good stuff. Um, but, yeah, that was a great tour. No, I mean, we, you know, we're good friends with the Priests and the Heaps. You know, we've heaps. done shows with the Heaps as well. <clears throat> and in fact, there, the American tour is, is a co headline with your R Heap. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, fantastic. So and again, in areas, in areas we're stronger, we'll headline. In areas they're stronger, they'll headline. Yeah. But both bands will be playing, both bands will be playing the same length. And we haven't got any openers either. So it's just purely an evening. As far as I know, it's purely an evening with Saxon and your R Heap. And then after that tour finishes, then we're into festival season. <laughs> busy busy it's i like, like to hear it god almighty yeah <laughs> <laughs> make sure that shoulder's strapped up yep. <laughs> oh no that shoulder's fine now yeah that's all, that's all cool <laughs> fantastic stuff fantastic stuff um and just one last question i ask everybody it's uh just to put you on the spot what's your favorite song from uh saxon then from your time in the band and and the only caveat is you can't choose something from the <clears throat> most recent album because everyone would <clears throat> you bastard i was gonna do that um <laughs> Oh, God. I mean, each album's got its own sort of thing. You know, I mean, I've got favourite songs on each album, really. I haven't got a total favourite. If you had to send one to space to, to show the aliens what Saxon are all about, what what would that one be? Uh, this Town Rocks. There we go. And what why that one? Glory. Why that one? Because uh, it's mad. <laughs> I mean, and it, and it sums us up, I think. You know, it's like, there's some fast, you know, fast double kick drum in it. So that's that's the sort of speed metal bit of it. And then it sort of slows down to half time. And the whole lyrics about going to a gig and having fun and, and this town's like mad for it and everything. I think that sort of sums us up, really. You know, you can't say fairer than that. Well, the best way to keep in touch with everything that Saxon are doing is uh, saxon747.com and across all the socials as well. And you can get to see what the guys are up to. Get your tickets, as we said, the 20 plus dates or something across Europe, 10 different countries, so you can't miss them. And then they go into America as well. And I think there's almost 30 dates, maybe even more than 30 dates with your eye heap. So it's going to be one heck of a <coughs> show. And uh, yeah, festival season coming as well. So there's so much chance we do to... Yeah, sorry, I'm interrupting you. Go for it, go and, and for it. During the summer, we're doing some more shows with Priest as well. So. Oh, wow. 
Well, there you go. So you cannot miss Saxon this year and get the, the latest album as well. I have to mention that Hellfire and Damnation. Fantastic record. Well, Nigel, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. I've loved listening to all your stories and uh, hey, best of luck for this year because, as you said, it's going to be you. one heck of a busy year. You coming to any of the shows? I wish I could. As I said, I live in the Highlands of Scotland, so the, the Glasgow one, I, I'm busy on a Monday night. I have a, I have a work thing on it every Monday night, and I think you're playing Monday at the Ovo in Glasgow. So, unfortunately, oh, I've uh, got it. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Next, next, next one. Next one, indeed. Yeah, if you ever come up to Scotland yeah. again, definitely. Oh, we will. We'll be back. Oh, good stuff. No problem. We love playing up there. Oh, it's mad, yeah. isn't it? I love it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and enjoy the rest of your day, Nigel. Pleasure. Thank you, and you too. All right. Lovely. Take care. Thank you. You too. Right. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye.